Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to our Pico 8 tutorial. Welcome to uh, our tutorial about how to make a roguelike. Um, so in the last episode, we added a procedural to kind of like we create, introduce a system to um, beautify the room, to decorate the rooms, to make them more interesting, to add like some tiles, some tile decorations to the room. So they have more character and kind of like already works. We had like three different room types. We have a room with a carpet, we have a room with torches. I guess we have a room with torches, a room with torches and a carpet. And we have a room that's kind of like the breeze, just the breeze. We see one, yeah, there's one with the breeze. Um, today I want to add at least two more types to that. Uh, kind of like expand upon the system that we already have to kind of add more variation to our game And again, this is later on you might sit down and add even more the problem is like every time you add like a room type That costs a bunch of tokens a little bit of tokens So you kind of have to kind of pick your battles and figure out if is it really something that improves my game? Uh, it might be worthwhile thinking about maybe these different room types also having a different um, gameplay so for example a deco dirt um, thing would might be about okay um, this is going to be, um, uh, maybe maybe this, you have to move slower through a dirty room, maybe there's some, some debris in the way or something. You will have to figure it out yourself. But um, something I want to add today is I want to, um, first of all, let's, let's maybe just um, a showcase how you can use this kind of system to add, to kind of like lean the chances of in these individual um, tiles spawning because right now we have like this function here it spawns like all of the tiles with equal uh, probability but you might be thinking like okay maybe you want to have certain tiles to be appear more often and I think this comes up in let me look at this up real quick yeah in a deco farm so this is going to, going to be about spawning the farms so it's kind of like plants and and why are plants growing in a dungeon don't worry about that it's gonna be fine <laughs> um, and so when we add this to our list, and we're just going to use the same kind of code, um, we're just going to add the, the different farms. We said like these two farms, the 70 and 71, are special because they are, um, they have gameplay reasons. They um, cover line of sight. And the other ones are like basically just decoration, but we're going to still add them. 72, 73, right? 73. And then maybe we're gonna add like some dirt some every now and then those rooms. Maybe are we gonna? No, we're not gonna. It's it's gonna be fine. So if you run this in no farm room. Yeah, there is one now. It's actually pretty good now. Um so here I would be kind of like in um um monster should not see me if I if I get in here. So that's really cool. Um Yeah, but uh, what if I want to have like a higher density of those, right? Like, what, what if I have, want to have more plants appearing? So I'm gonna add, add the one, so sometimes there it will just, some tiles will be clean of plants. You don't have to like every tile to be a plant. Uh, but then also I'm thinking about maybe inc increasing the chances of those spawning. So let's add, uh, we can also add like more copies of the 70 in, in here, right? So if I, now the 70, tile number 70 will spawn with triple chance and I'm gonna add this as well. So now these have a higher chance to spawn than the than the regular grass, uh, which means there will be higher percentage that, that I can actually hide in this room, right? So this is, and you can see now this is like uh, filled with those farms that actually hide line of sight and that actually does uh, better job at at um, at blocking line of sight than previously so we can like, kind of like tweak the percentages in this way I won't actually what add the 74 to here that's how I had it before and I think that kind of like suits the look of the of the room yeah something like this so now we have like this densely densely uh, overgrown rooms and I can actually depend on uh, when I enter this room to actually line of sight being significantly reduced uh, we can maybe test those rooms out by um, how did I do it? Um, by bringing back the line of sight. I return, currently have it off because I want to kind of like see what kind of rooms they uh, generate, I guess. Oh, oh, wait a minute, is it because I press the button? It's because I press the button, right? So if you go uh, normally up the stairs, 
see now you like line of sight is blocked while I'm in this room and I kind of have to like find my way out here. It's also bad for me because sometimes there might be a monster lurking in this room and so um, so I might be like going through this room and suddenly like there's a monster. But now that I discovered this room like I would be able to uh, fly through this room and if I go through this room monsters won't be able to figure out where I went. So that's that's really nice. Good, but I think the most important room, the room that I personally love the most, is going to be the room that is full of vases. The room that's going to be full of vases. So let's try to add this one. Now this will be a bit tricky. Let me see. How did I do it last time around? So I call it Deco Vase, and we have to think about this real, real deep, a real deep. Okay, so first of all, um, I want to add an here one out one of those and again this is a bit bad because we're exploding the we're running the explode function for every tile of the room so this actually slows down the procedural generation it doesn't it, it, we don't actually notice it so it's not that too bad but if there's ever a situation where it's like oh the procedural generation takes quite a while uh, here's where we would do it so i would I will actually add three um, empty tiles to, to our list, just three empty tiles. So, you know, the ch this kind of like mod modifies the chances of, of vases spawning, right? And then I'm going to add it to, to, um, to those two, two vases here, seven and eight, seven and eight. Okay. And then we kind of, kind of have to figure out where we want to spawn the vase. Now we have to be really careful here because the vases are not walkable. So we don't want to actually spawn a vase uh, on top of a monster uh, because again this is happening after the monster have been spawned uh, and that's good because we don't want you know the room to be full of vases so no, no monsters fit in there. You I kind of want to have this before the monsters. So you're going to do something like if m get um, tx uh, ty if this is actually an uh, empty tile. And is walkable tx ty check mobs. We're actually checking if there's a mob on this room here. And so something we did above, we don't want to have a vase next to a um a, a door. That's that's bad. We have this with torches, and so we're gonna make sure that we are not next to a door. And not next to them. So for now, let's see how this looks. Uh, and we're just gonna go and set tx ty, and then uh, get rund tar, right? Something along these lines. Oh, we didn't put it in the list of, of possible rooms. Always the same problem. Um, here's something we might do to kind of speed things up. We can put this thing inside the if statement. That way uh, we just apply it for the parts that are actually... Probably doesn't really make, make that difference, but you know, just in case. Mm, no vases? No, there's some vases there. So you see, I kind of don't like, I kind of don't like how the vases are kind of like just randomly strewn about. It, they kind of like look like this. This looks like nobody would set up vases like this. This actually hampers my my navigation to this room. That doesn't seem seem right. I want the vases to be kind of like around the edges of the of the room. Um, so I so you know so they're kind of like off to the sides always. So how are we going to do that? So we want to bring back our beloved signature function. Uh, so generally, the way I want to solve this is basically I don't want to... Um, I, it's fine to place a vase if the cardinal directions... Um, in cardinal directions, there is at least one direction covered. One movement is, is kind of like not... not um, like covered up, right? So um, I don't want the vases to spawn in the middle of the room where all the current directions are free, 
but spawning it a vast like for example a corner is great spawning spawning it on the on the edges is great and then as i as i go through the room you know there will be more opportunities to vast to also pop up in the, in the center but generally i want um i don't want them to begin spawning at the center of the room that, that's basically my idea here so we're going to do something like um so if it's walkable and not next to things and we're going to do something like uh, local sig equals get sig. We, uh, maybe I will put everything into one line in a second here. I just want to like get a feel of, of the if statement. Also, this is a big if statement. So let's put everything maybe a little bit in individual lines. So we're checking for what we're checking for. Okay. So local get sig tx ty. Uh, and then we can be like, we can go um, bcomp sig 0b so cardinal directions is let me think about this so it, uh, it would be 0 0 0 0 and then doesn't matter uh, actually we can go zero here um that would be open in all directions yes uh, but the mask is now important 0b so we care about the cardinal directions we don't care about the diagonals at all so this would be uh this means that this tile is freestanding and then we can just plug in here, get sick in here. And so this is supposed to be false. We're not supposed to have a, a freestanding thing. So it's like not bcomp get sick. Like this. And we kind of like, this is a bit of a, like an impromptu hack here, but the generally, the, again, the idea is we're checking for all the cardinal directions just reiterate, we're checking for the cardinal directions. And if all four cardinal directions are free, then we're not spawning. We're not spawning a, a vase here. That means that we're probably in the center of the room or somewhere. So let's see how this looks. Okay. Okay, so there's still some vases in the center, but that basically means that, you know, the vases are next to other vases, so they felt like free about I was setting up there, but generally we kind of like they gravitate a little bit more towards the center, at least a little bit more. It's kind of weird that. Let, let me look at some more vases. Yep, that's good. You see, they kind of like bunch up. It's kind of weird that they're that they're going. I just want to make sure. Yes, yes. Oh, the classic, the classic Christian. I was wondering. Didn't quite look as 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 I wanted it to look. It looked a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Very few vases there. It's kind of weird. But I guess that happens when. Uh, it kind of really depends on how many vases you place at the beginning. It's maybe. Maybe the chances are really low now. Let me see. Um, I want to make sure if the TX is TY, if I didn't do another of those bugs. Yeah, no, no but it seems good. We could maybe bring, back, bring up the probability of the vast spawning. See, now they're like really um, clustering at the edges of the room. And sometimes you still get like vases that, that go into the center, but the per percentage, the chance of them doing so is a lot lower. This is a really good room, like a room that is like really tiny and the vases are at the edges. Okay, so this is n not ideal, but I I will live with that. Oh, by the way, here's a door spawned next to another door. That's something I already talked about, right? But ha, we have now some functionality that we can, can deal with this problem because we have now this next to tile function. So that was about this door, right? Um, where did we do this? When we did the install doors. So we made sure that it is a door uh, and Wait a minute, what is the is door function? Is door. We're getting a signature. Uh huh. And then it's next door. So let's let's just do it here. Install doors. 
and <coughs> not um, dx dy. Again, I'm kind of maybe now is the time. <laughs> no, we're not gonna we're not gonna experiment now. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, we cannot see now because it's gonna be take a lot of time to for us to find uh, the situation again. But now the doors are should not spawn next to other doors. Okay. So now this is this takes care of the vases. Um, so now we can think about how to proceed from here. So this would be generally the, the I think the biggest problem now is we want to spawn some chests. We want to spawn some chests and rooms, and also we might want to think about doing the placement of the of the starting position a bit differently. So let me go 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 through our to-do list. So we have room decorations, we have tile decorations. Uh, we don't have better monsters, you know, we don't have items, um, chests. Um, entry not in an alcove, that's something that we have to deal with. Remove isolated rooms, we haven't, we haven't dealt with this. No doors next to doors, that's something we actually dealt with right now. Um, there is another problem here. Um, decos don't, don't kill um, entry. So the problem is if the entry will be can be in somewhere inside a room, there is a chance that maybe the decoration in the room will kind of override the um, the the trap door, kind of like the stairs that went up from there. So we want to make sure that if we're spawning an entry in a room, that we don't kill that the decorations don't kill it. But that's not going to be a very difficult check. Uh, just like a, a reminder for us. So we have some time left. Let me think about if we're going to do it now or maybe next episode. Yeah, let's try it maybe now. So um, we have to think about some kind of way. You remember last time around when we did, uh, when we created like a little Pico 8 file to kind of like generate this, this, this uh, huge little, um, this, um, this array, because it's like a very long array and it was very difficult to manipulate it by hand. So we create like a little program that takes care and generates our huge array. Well, um, it might be time to think about maybe some a similar situation to deal with our items and our mobs. So far we have very few of them, but we might add a lot of them now because we want to be adding, be adding chests and items. And I want to add like a lot of items first before we add chests for reasons that will become obvious for in a second here. So we want to maybe add, let's, let's start with the items. Like we want to add a lot of items now. Now I could like go through here and be then typing them in here, but you can see this it's in Pico 8 becomes very tedious very quickly. And even so, like if I want to ma manipulate the, the um, you know, the stats of the rusty sword or of the ninja star, then I will have to like look up uh, each one of those um, arrays and they're not aligned. So I'm not really sure which number belongs to which items. It's a nightmare. So we need in order to add, manipulate the items, we need some kind of tool to uh, be quickly able to generate these arrays. And that tool is Google Sheets. So yeah, a very simple solution. We're just gonna get a spreadsheet program like Google Sheets, which is free. Um, and we're gonna uh, set up all of the items, all of the stats of our items and all of our monsters in the Google Sheets. And then we are going to use an export function, some kind of like we're going to create an export function that gets all the data out that we created and puts it in a string that we can just copy out and paste in our in our Pico 8. All right. So real quick, I'm going to do like a time lapse because it's Google Sheets, man. Uh, I'm going to do like a time lapse and create all of the data that we have right now. I'm going to try to recreate it in Google Sheets. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of like a little table. Um, this basically recreated all of the weapons that we had previously, uh, all of like placeholder items. It recreated it as a Google uh, spreadsheet. Now, I'm not in love with those weapons. I will probably, I will uh, at the beginning of the next episode, I will probably redo this entire thing and make different stats. You know, I actually have come up with some some <clears throat> some better uh, item design here. But just like to show you to, to kind of like how, how we're going to get this information out now back to Pico 8. How would we go through the process of getting uh, stuff from here back to Pico 8? So I'm actually exactly where... Can I, can I go away? Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah, so, so here items, we're going to... I'm very far away. You probably can't hear me now. <laughs> I'm going to create a new sheet. 
I'm gonna call it export. And so here is where we are going to um, to get the individual uh, export data. Here's where, where it will come out. And we will just be able to copy this data out into our Urpico 8. So here is how you can do this. So it's basically like programming. I'm now explaining Google Sheets, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's in this case it makes sense. For example, you can go like something like equals explode. And you can see that explode will show up. So we can like um, type in like a function in here. That's kind of like the idea of Google Sheets. So if you go explode uh, and three equation signs, it will start uh, with explode here, right? And then we can go and, and combines two strings. So it's like concat, like dot, dot in Pico 8. Then there's this function called join that basically is the reverse of explode. It basically takes the multiple values and, and puts them in separated by commas. And so that's what we're gonna do now. Um, so I think another comma and then we can here while we're typing we can go back to the items and we can just select a range for example these guys right and then we can close this and 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 then three now we're using multiple um, quotation marks because quotation marks itself to kind of escape quotation marks. So we can add quotation mark as a character in a string rather than close the string at this point. And bam. So you can see this um, prints out the right side basically of, of our, of our uh, equals uh, thing. So we can actually, the better um, solution would be to go to itm underscore name equals explode, whatever. Right, and so we can now copy this now and go back to Pico 8. Now, this is not that exciting, obviously, but we could go like here and like plop, plop it in. And then that's how you could get the data from that you designed in Excel in uh, Google Sheets, how you can get it back quickly into Pico 8 after you did some changes. Now I'll go through this entire process real quick for the other ones and then we can go, we will be right back. <laughs> All right, and we're done. And so now we can like basically uh, copy those guys in here. I re realized that I just overwritten one of those anyway. So, oh wait, that's so weird. It actually overwrites next line as well. Something something, something odd happens when I do this. Let's just copy all, all four then and paste them in. That's, that's, that's how it works, okay. All right, so this is basically how now you can go in here and start designing those stats and rearranging those stats. Um, we can do the same thing with monsters as well. And that's actually something I'm going to do right now. Uh, additionally, in addition to that, we're going to go add monsters. And now I also want to do, go through this process with a monster. So give me a couple of seconds. <laughs> All right, so I got my monsters um, set up here as well. And again, I'm exploring all of this. So now I can just like copy these things out and plop them right in here. Um, some One thing to, to, uh, to note that I, I uh, forgot about explaining um, just before is to make sure that um, we differentiate bef between explode and explode val. Generally, when it's numbers, it's explode val. And when it's text, it explo it's explode. Um, I think there was a bit of a misunderstanding there for a second, like we did it wrong uh, at the beginning with items. But I think this is, this is everything is correct, yeah. I added a new uh, variable uh, called the names of the monsters, players, players and slime in this case. We have, so we have now player and slime. But you know, that's just like something that maybe we wanna later on actually save the names for the monsters. So we can, for example, um, Maybe you can look at the monsters. Maybe there's like a, some kind of examine function, or maybe uh, there's going to be like a function that tells you who killed you. So you can get the name of the monster that killed you or the type of the monster that killed you. Mm. But generally it's also like for me, so I can see which monster I'm, I'm designing here. So it's not just like a number, but actual a monster. Okay, so we want to add more monsters to it. Uh, but the reason I set, it, set up this entire thing is so we can talk about like what are the information we want to have from our monsters and from our items. 
And so I think one important aspect to, to think about here is why do we want to have more monsters? And the reason is, of course, we want to have like the game to change over time a little bit, right? We don't want to just like, have the same game over and over again. We want, you know, the game to evolve as you progress through the game. Um, and you maybe you want the game to be more difficult or more challenging, although, you know, that's kind of like something we can discuss later on as well. But generally, you want the game not to be the same. You don't want to fight the same slams, you know, multiple floors, like eight floors down the line. You want to have like some more variation, some more interesting things to happen. Same with, with with objects, by the way, with with items. You want to have also variation with the items. At the beginning, you have like very um, low stat items, and then you, your items get better. So you want to have like this idea that you will get a better sword down the line. You don't want to pick the best sword on the first floor. <clears throat> so. Um, what we want to actually think about is how the um, we want to manipulate the random number generator, basically. Right now, we're just always spawning slimes. That's fine. But now we also want to spawn chests with items in it. And we want to make sure that the random number generator that spawns items in those chests actually takes into account what floor we are in. So it puts better items in, the, uh, in higher floors and uh, lower, um, lower stat numbers in lower floors. You know, stuff like that. Um, and for this, I want to add two new, uh, two new uh, stats, two new abilities. Minf and maxf. That means minimum floor, maximum floor. Um, so basically the minimum floor at which this, uh, this um, item will spawn and the maximum floor at which the item will spawn. One and eight is basically means it will spawn on every, every floor. And for example, one and two, it means it will spawn on just the first two floors and something like eight, because we have eight floors, right? And the ninth floor is the, the final floor. And seven and eight means just like some kind of like final monster kind of situation, or if this was a, if this was a monster. So we're gonna start with one eight in each, each category. And so when we're designing items and monsters, we also wanna think about you know, how we're gonna just distribute those monsters and items along the level. You know, Again, we want to have stronger monsters to appear um, or more challenging monsters or more complicated monsters to appear later down the line and the simpler monsters to begin early on. And want the early, uh, you wanna have like simple weapons and may, later on maybe more complicated weapons. So I wanna copy the stat and I want to put it in here as well. So we want to have like the same set for the monsters. And then, you know, I'm going to maybe sit down in a second here and, and create like a little export thing. So something that we want to do next episode is we want to prepare a bunch of items and a bunch of monsters. And we want to have like a function that kind of like takes into account, um, you know, the floor that we are currently at and spawns the floor appropriate monsters and items on each floor. Um, so yeah, that's going to be kind of like the homework, so to speak, for the next time. Try to come up with some items uh, from what you see, like interesting items. They don't have to be like uh, clad in stats just yet. Uh, you kind of like have to kind of like use the description to kind of like come up with some kind of idea, and then we can you can uh, think of like some kind of way to make this work later down the line. It's just so we can have like items. So we have items, and so we can start actually. So we have some content, so we can actually. Uh, you know, implement this procedural generation. At the beginning of next episode, I will walk you through some of the stats, some of the monsters I created uh, myself, and then we can start implementing the functions that distribute items and monsters on the floors. And then when that's done, we're pretty close. That means that we actually, uh, we're gonna start maybe adding some uh, final gameplay tweaks and we might be actually uh, heading for the final stretch. All right, guys, so see you in the next episode and also join our Discord. Um, that's gonna be down in doobly-doo, the comment, uh, the link to that. And of course, you can also get t-shirts today. I'm not wearing any special t-shirt, but um, you can get special uh, Lazy Devs t-shirt in the store as well. So check that one out. And of course, the code for today's episode is gonna be in doobly-doo. Uh, I am not sure if I will share this spreadsheet with you guys. Uh, I might spread, uh, share the final spreadsheet when it's done, or at least like the preliminary spreadsheet when it's done. I'm gonna share that with you guys. So you can, you can take a look at what I came up with. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.